Hi guys, this is Nick from Games Up Next Level Board Gaming. Hereby I'm going to uh, show you how to make this 3D board of the game Blood Rage. Blood Rage is one of my uh, favorite games that I have in my collection and that I have actually played. It is easy, it is accessible, it is easy to learn and it's just good fun. There is a deep going strategy in the game as soon as you know it. So. Uh, because we are fans of this game, we uh, yeah, we like to build stuff and we uh, we like to enhance the game as much as possible. So a friend of mine came up with uh, with the amazing idea because one reason this game has included Ragnarok in the game during the gameplay, provinces are going to be destroyed and consumed by Ragnarok. And my friend he had an idea by telling, hey, why can we not make Ragnarok happening for real on this board? So, after some thinking, we uh, thought, let's make everything modular and hollow. And as soon as Ragnarok happens, people can just take away this province, place it next to the board, and you have Ragnarok happening. The first and most important priority that you're going to have if you want to build this board is, guys, it's a board game. The most important thing of a board game is that it is going to play and you're not going to be obstructed by it, you're not going to be annoyed by it. Uh, you just want to play your game, you want to focus on your gameplay strategies. And yes, the board can look appealing, the board has to look nice, but gameplay is your first and only concern. So, for example, this is a good example. Yggdrasil, it's a little bit of a dead tree. Um, in my opinion, it still looks fine, it still looks good, but it's not a lush tree like you would expect Yggdrasil to be. Why is it not? Because, for example, if here would now be a full lush tree with big leaves and everything, I would not see Fenrir on this other side, I wouldn't see Tyr standing there. It is going to be annoying as hell to ask your opponent for what is there, maybe revealing your strategies. Now, it's just a little stem of the tree. It's most of the time not going to obstruct you and it's a little bit nice to look left to right, side to side, 3D terrain pieces. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, take you into the tutorial. I'm going to make it into parts. So we're going to start with part one. If you're going to like it, if you want to see more of this, please like and subscribe uh, and let me know what you think of it. And yeah, let's do it. All right guys, here we go. So, we're going to do some measurements first. And we'll measure the board and it's approximately 55 centimeters by 55 centimeters. I want this board to be bigger because we want to have more scenery on it. So, we're going to multiply everything by 1.2. So everything is going to be 20% bigger than it is than it actually is. So the board is going to be 65 by 65. It's approximately I want to have even numbers, it works better, it works nicer, easier. So Yggdrasil is going to be around 20 centimeters wide by 24 centimeters long. And we're going to do this with all the provinces, just do it approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. So we're going to search now for the center point. And we're going to make some markers for Yggdrasil. So 10 centimeters on both sides and 12 centimeters on the top and the bottom. Then just uh, do as you see, just freehand Yggdrasil on it. It doesn't really matter if it's correct or if it's exactly like Yggdrasil on the board. Do it with all the other provinces. Make sure that they just look nice the way you think it, lo it looks nice and you'll be fine. Then just take a knife, cut away the excess, just rough work, just save some time. And after that, I'll just place some markers on it, one, two, three, four, till nine. So it's not going to be that much of a hassle to puzzle them back in while you're doing the project. Then just uh, we take the hot pen, hot knife, hot, yeah. Hot cutter, <laughs> it's not really a wire cutter, but I don't know the name for it. 
and cut out all the uh, all the provinces as you can see I've done them in like what was it three seconds no it's just a video then take uh, the hot wire and go along the edges you can see I have left uh, some room some space from the edges and that's important because we're going to make a foot of a hill I believe they are all like cliffs like 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 hills ending up in the water but they are not that straight they are not going straight down so when you're cutting this always cut it in a slope cut it in an angle so the bottom is wider than the top of, uh, of the province and that's very important and don't keep it in, uh, straight make it go back and forward back and forward with your hand make some motion in it and the edges are going to be looking more natural there's my family they uh, also enjoy looking what I'm doing and we're going to do this with all the provinces so uh, just make sure that the bottom of the hill is wider than the top except for one part and that's Jotunheim Jotunheim is an icy surface uh, cliffs, icy cliffs, fjords and I want them straight so now I took some uh, old poker chips and I'm placing them everywhere where you have spawn points for your monsters and your warriors I do like the poker chips because they are going to raise a little bit from the from the floor from the terrain poker chips are actually ideal because the bases of the monsters are approximately the same size as uh, as the monster bases as the poker chips so they work out quite perfectly then uh, as you can see it's all free handing so it's all trial and error doing it over and over again until you are satisfied until you think it's perfect so I believe we should cut out a little bit cut away a little bit more of the of the edges I want some more oceans and after placing the poker chips we could see that we had some space to spare so and you see here this is a part of Jotunheim and uh, Jotunheim we are going to cut straight but making uh, making movements with your wrist going left to right left to right very quickly very quickly and you get that very uh, sharp raised edges and of course with all the other provinces Mannheim Alfheim we're going to do the same but I do prefer them in a slope because I believe they are more like rocky surfaces so yeah but just do as you like do as you what you think it, it, it looks better do what you think it fits better as long as you keep some space for the ocean to be So yeah, just make sure you're just cutting it into willy-nilly places. The more unperfect you're going to make it, the more natural it's going to look. Now we're going to take Yggdrasil and we're going to draw it on top of another piece of foam. Because I want Yggdrasil to be the center piece of this, uh, of this board. So I want it to be raised from the ground. I want it to be raised up in the middle because Yggdrasil is the tree of life. It has the, more, the most attention to the board. It's the most important place anyways, where you can get the biggest loot. So we'll just uh, cut it out, place it back on the original and trace it again. So they are going to fit nicely together. Just cut away some excess material that it's not perfect and in some minutes from now some time from now we're going to glue them together and you have a nice mountain in the middle of your setting and now comes a very uh, very cool part it was actually an idea of a friend of mine to uh, start doing this project and we're going to hollow out all the provinces that we have and I wish I had a wire cutter that I could mold into a shape, that I could fix into a shape so that I could, that, so that I could scrape out the, the material from the inside 
I didn't have it, so I was thinking it was going to be working fine with the creme brulee burner. It actually does work fine, just be careful with the fumes, you get a big headache if you don't do it in a ventilated room. So do it in a ventilated room and watch out not to burn yourself. Just eventually, I didn't think the creme brulee burner went deep enough, so I start cutting away and pulling away and scratching away material so it was deep enough. After that going over with the creme brulee burner again and just to make it um, yeah just to give it a surface that looks like the inside of a of a cave which is actually nice uh, anyways uh, to see why making this hollow well as you have seen in the in the spoiler is uh, the board is going to have uh, ragnarok uh, spaces and i wanted to put some uh, some miniatures in there that yeah vikings that are dead so uh, yeah Eventually just do it with everything and all of it. I promise you this is the only terrible job you have on this board. The rest is all pretty nice to do. This was the only part that was freaking me out after I've done some provinces. It is uh, time consuming. But as I said, if you have the right tools for it, then it should be much easier. When this is done, we're going to... Uh, paste Yggdrasil together and eventually we're going to give every province a thick coat of PVA glue. PVA glue is in my opinion my best friend in creating dioramas or whatever you are creating. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect, perfect glue. It has multiple uh, uses. Now we're going to uh, paste the two Yggdrasil parts together and after this we're going to give it a little shell for all the provinces. But yeah, as I said, with this board the most important thing is the playability. Just don't think that your first priority is to make it look beautiful, don't think it's it's to make it look nice, make it look realistic. That is not the priority of this board. It's a board game and that's what we always should remember. We don't want to have a beautiful board that eventually is annoying to play on. So sometimes we just need to uh, accept some things and think about playability. And we need to forfeit some parts or for example, we cannot go with a full, lush, big, massive Yggdrasil tree. Just because you don't want to have a big centerpiece in the middle and you cannot find your opponent's warriors. That's just uh, my opinion of uh, creating this board. I don't want to spend a lot of time in, this, uh, in building these boards and eventually having my friends tell me or having myself tell me I don't want to play on this board because it's annoying. I just prefer to play on the regular board because I can see everything. So there's a there's sometimes a thin line like are we going to place some trees, are we going to place some bushes or some rocks or here or there. Just make sure that you're not going to be bothered by them during the game. So yeah, we're uh, going to make a shell for every province with PVA glue so we can later on work on it. And see you in a bit. So yeah guys, this was part one of uh, how to make a 3D board of Blood Rage, the board game. So I hope you liked it, I hope it was clear. Uh, please let me know in the comments uh, if there is anything that you didn't like. This is one of my first videos I'm doing, so I have a lot to learn probably. Um, as a reference, I want to uh, give up Luke's APS. Uh, please check out this guy's uh, videos. I had a lot, a lot, a lot of ideas from his videos. He is a very helpful guy. Um, yeah, you can just learn a lot of it. Uh, just if you have some ideas or you don't know how to make them or how to create them. Um, Luke's APS is the first thing I'm writing in Google on, uh, on YouTube. So, great guy, great explanation videos. 
So uh, for future uh, projects or if you want to see part two of how to make uh, the Blood Race board game uh, the second part, we're going to have uh, three to four parts I believe. Just uh, like and subscribe and yeah, see you later, bye.